You're about to discover the 10 cruises that I believe everybody should have on their to-do list, their bucket list, their must-do list. I'm Gary Bembridge. This is another of my tips for travelers. I want to talk about the 10 essential cruises, the 10 cruises that I really believe that everybody should try and do at least once in their life. The first of these is a Caribbean cruise. The Caribbean is the biggest and most popular cruising region in the world, and that's for a very good reason. It is absolutely magnificent, and all the islands and the places that the cruise lines go to are phenomenally well geared up to deal with cruises and the whole cruising vacation. There are a whole bunch of different cruises that you can do out of the Caribbean, many of them sailing out of Miami or Port Canaveral or other ports within the US. You can also do some directly from Europe where they'll cross the Atlantic, spend some time in the Caribbean and head back. So if you don't want to fly, there are three key cruises in the Caribbean to consider. You have the Eastern Caribbean, which will do things like the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, Dominican Republic. You've got the Western Caribbean that will do things like Jamaica, go to large parts of Mexico like Cozumel, Costa Maya. Then you have the Southern Caribbean, which is more your St. Kitts, Antigua, Martinique, Dominica, St. Lucia, Barbados. It's hard to choose between them, but definitely pick one of them. And of course, if you want to add more cruises, do all three of them. So you've done all three sectors of the Caribbean, but definitely Caribbean should be on that list. The second biggest cruising region in the world is the Mediterranean. And again, for very good reasons. It gives you a great overview of Europe because on a cruise, you'll often call it multiple countries. So you'll see lots of different cultures. There are beautiful historical sites. There's stunning beaches, depending on where you go. And so it's a great way of seeing Europe. And it's really great, of course, because you can see multiple countries, lots of different places, and you only have to unpack and then pack once. There's again, like in the Caribbean, lots of different itineraries. Many of them will go out of places like Barcelona, Athens, Venice, or Rome. You can also do it out of Southampton in the UK, which takes a little bit of longer because you have to head through the Straits of Gibraltar to get into the Mediterranean. Lots of different itineraries. You have the Eastern, the, the Western, and of course, one of the most popular for people to do is the trip from Venice down to Athens, which is really magnificent. You get a chance to also see the Greek islands and normally, of course, we'll come to places like Dubrovnik. The Mediterranean absolutely should be on your list. And again, there are multiple options, but definitely the Mediterranean. My third suggestion is Alaska. Alaska, I think I'm right in saying, is the third biggest cruising region. It's growing really fast and it's really magnificent. It took me a while to get to Alaska, but once I went there, I realized why it was so popular. There is magnificent scenery. It really is absolutely spectacular. You could do it out of places like Vancouver, very popular out of Seattle are the really popular ones. I would recommend for your very first cruise to Alaska, do an inside passage cruise. And when you're looking at booking, try and make sure that you're going on an itinerary that includes Glacier Bay. Not all cruise lines get into Glacier Bay. It's very restricted around how many ships can go there every day, but it is really, really incredible. And of course, as the name suggests, there's lots of glaciers. So my strong recommendation for your first time cruise to Alaska, Inside Passage, really it is a magnificent place to go. And more and more cruise lines are going from the bigger ships down to some of the smaller ships. So you have lots of choice on options. Alaska definitely should be on that list. My next suggestion and a really strong tip is to do one of the iconic and classic trips. And this is a transatlantic on the Queen Mary II. In the 40s, 50s and before that, crossing the Atlantic was the only way you could get between Europe and the United States. Cunard is the only cruise liner in Queen Mary II that has a traditional liner ship. And it's a really magnificent experience. It takes between seven and eight days, depending on the itinerary you choose. And of course, that's all at sea, but it's a whole beautiful trip where they try and recreate some of the romance and specialness of those very glamorous days of cruising. It's a magnificent ship with sort of Art Deco inspired decor, lots of dressing up. It's a great trip to do if you've got a special event like a birthday or an anniversary, but it is one of the most iconic trips and you need to do it on Cunard Queen Mary too. You can do other transatlantic trips which are repositioning, but really for me, the ultimate classic one is the Queen Mary 2. Absolutely, definitely do that one. One of the most beautiful trips that you can do is a cruise to the Norwegian fjords. And there's lots of options you can do. You can either go out of places in Sweden, for example, or you can sail from the UK out of Southampton where they'll have a day at sea, time around the Norwegian fjords and a day at sea back. The Norwegian fjords are absolutely magnificent and you sail really far 
inland on ships with huge big walls of rock on either side, waterfalls, into these beautiful little picturesque towns. If you go in summer, which is when the season is, you also have pretty much midnight sun, so it's light all the time. So as you cruise through the fjords, you can go out on deck or sit on your balcony and just enjoy the scenery. But I would strongly, strongly recommend the Norwegian fjords. That was another trip that it took me a while to do. But once I did that, I now recommend it like crazy to everybody. Norwegian fjords, absolutely magnificent. Another very popular European-based cruise is to the Baltics, and this is very magical. These normally go to places like Helsinki, they'll go to Tallinn, and then they will head into St. Petersburg in Russia. And normally there'll be either two or three overnights there to make sure that you can really explore the magnificent that is St. Petersburg with its beautiful buildings, its museums, its old chateaus and castles, and it really is a magnificent trip. It's very interesting because you're gonna see parts of the world that you don't really know that well. And it definitely is a great, great trip to do. And the advantage of going on a cruise, particularly if you go on cruise excursions, is you don't have to worry with all the hassles of Russian visas, because if you go on a cruise line excursion, you don't have to bother with visas, so that's a big plus. The Baltics is definitely something I would have up there, particularly if you're interested in understanding and experiencing very different cultures, and you're very interested into the cultural and the art side. Baltics is a phenomenal cruise. And again, lots of different cruise lines go there as well. So on some of the smaller cruise ships, they dock right in the heart of St. Petersburg. So if you're going on a Baltics, also look at some of those smaller shipped cruise lines. Ever since I was a little boy, when I first heard about the Panama Canal, that was on my list of things to do. Going through the Panama Canal is again a bit like a transatlantic. It's one of the big iconic type of trips you can do. I would always recommend try and build in at some point in your cruising life a trip that's going to take you through the Panama Canal. It is an incredible experience. You can do that obviously if you're doing a, some big grand voyage like a world tour. They will often go through a Panama Canal, but you can often do from the Caribbean up to Los Angeles or San Francisco, or you can do if you're doing parts of South America, some of the cruises will go through there. But Panama Canal, it's a magical day and it is just a phenomenal understanding of man's ingenuity and engineering. And it really is, again, one of those iconic trips. And I think if you're into cruising, the Panama Canal, like the Transatlantic, is an iconic thing that you want to have on your list of things to have experienced. My next suggestion I really wrestled with whether I should make it two or one, but because of the pure enormity of cost of going there, I've made it one, and that's to go to one of the polar regions, either the Arctic or Antarctica. Now, both of those for me were on my wish list, and I've been to both the Arctic and I've been to Antarctica. They're very different. So if you go to the Arctic, you're gonna see things like polar bears. If you go to Antarctica, you're gonna see penguins. Go to one or either of them. Antarctica for me was probably the most different and the most incredible and the one that for me really blew me away. So actually Antarctica is the place that I'm going to for a second time. So if I did have to recommend one, I guess I'm saying Antarctica because that's the one I'm heading back to for a second time. One of the most magical regions of the world is the Galapagos and that is definitely something that should be on the list. It's like the polar regions, it's a very expensive place to go, but the wildlife is so unique and different, and there are very strict rules around who can go there, so that's what makes it kind of expensive. But Galapagos definitely should be on the list. My next tip is around one of the most beautiful and interesting parts of the world, and that's the French Polynesian Islands. At the time of recording this, I have not long been back from there, and it was incredible. The islands are very beautiful, the people are amazing, the culture is phenomenal. It's so isolated and again, it's quite difficult to get to. It's eight and a half hours flight from Los Angeles. It takes you 21 hours from Paris to get there. But once you're there, it is just absolutely beautiful. There are just under 200 islands, only 60 odd of them are inhabited. And going on a cruise, you go to see very diverse islands. Some are volcanic, some are very lush, and some of them are just incredibly beautiful beaches and reefs. So the French Polynesian Islands is definitely one that I would really recommend you have on the list. There are so many cruises and options that you can do. Those for me are the 10 absolute must see and must do based on my experience. I have loads of tips about cruising destinations and all sorts of cruising opportunities and ideas. 
So why don't you watch one of those videos right now?